Myers for uh, giving us this opportunity to know this uh, work and also to discuss a little bit. Uh, thanks, Teresa. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, so I will read some comments that I wrote after watching the movie. And so we we had your uh, article, some of you, but I have to confess, I didn't read it before. Because <laughs> I wanted to see what was my reaction. Uh, so without any guide, let's say, to see what um, this movie was giving me. And so sorry, there's some no, things no, no, that no. just <laughs> been said, actually. <laughs> so, uh, OK. so. Um, so when I started watching the movie El Futuro, uh, what immediately caught my attention was the montage of the first images following the black hole of the opening sequence that we have seen at the very beginning when we have you know, the recording voice. Uh, one of the first things that struck me as a spectator was the intermittency of the montage. Uh, the, rapid, the rapid passage, uh, passage sorry, uh, that permeates the whole uh, film at multiple levels. Uh, so this rapid passage from one image to uh, another, apparently without continuity, like shots casually just posed, or like a collage, like the one that we see on the glass of a mirror at the very beginning, uh, visibly gives us a sense of fracture and serves the quiet of our eye seeking for rest. This filmic fabric uh, is conflictive as this traverse fractured, constantly interrupted by images that impose themselves as subsequent shocks. Uh, this fabric uh, requires from us to contribute to the montage, that is to draw on uh, Eisenstein's theory, an intellectual montage, in order to fill the blanks of the movie. Uh, concurrently, a level of content, uh, the intermittency, impedes the linear development of the story. Maybe because there is no story at all? <laughs> at least there is no story in the way in which we used to think that is, as the development or the evolution, the abandonment uh, of a fact that accomplishes its trajectory, going towards its destiny, towards an end. There is no advancement here. Maybe circularity, but definitely uh, no progressive time. The historical time, the plot, seems to be supplanted uh, by an attention towards the space, topology, uh, which is the blending and the stretching, the forming and folding of space. So the beginning, uh, we are in a house, actually we are in a house during the whole movie, uh, except for the final se sequence. And the omnipresent uh, silent embrace of the house assumes the role of the protagonist, otherwise missing. In fact, the house bears the traces of the writing of a space with no protagonist, with no author, no subject of the discourse. There is no subject other of the filmic discourse, neither in the first sequence where somebody only incidentally traverses the video uh, whose head is significantly cut out of the screen, nor in the crowded central part of the movie with its close-ups uh, and overlapping conversations which are nothing but interrupted communications uh, that we have seen actually, amplified by the disturbance of the audio like a broken old disc. However, uh, despite its structures, the film proceeds as a sort of continuum a stream of multiple intersecting, superimposing discourses. Now, all this passion of the fragmentary that dominated the movie uh, can be seen as con condensed in a particular figure of speech whose movement is seconded by the, mon the montage itself, sorry, of the movie, and which is particularly well exemplified by those shots of the first and second sequence, depends if we understand the black hole as the first sequence. And this figure is called Synedoki. Synedoki is the rhetoric figure where a part of something stands, stands for or signifies the totality of which it is a part. In the film, in fact, we almost never see full objects, but, on, um, sorry, but only particular aspects. And framing is often uh, decentered. That again gives us the impression of an intentional, accidental, and casual shooting, almost by mistake. Um, that is like if the camera is you know, left there just accidentally. Um, so especially in the first sequence, or second, uh, the camera lingers on details such as a, a corner of a window and of a shower curtains, tiles, a red couch, uh, partly out of framing, uh, faces close-ups. We also glimpse a bedroom for a, from a half-closed door, uh, portions of space, and people reflecting mirrors. Synadoki is thus a form of simultaneous understanding. 
it has a sort of anticipatory structure. <coughs> we anticipate, continue, and imaginarily complete the absent totality to the present fragment, at once giving full sense to the fragments. Moreover, this filmic strategy that makes, us, uh, that makes use of the synecdoche through an amateur-like shooting style with all the mistakes typical of the lack of expertise makes essential the accidental, the contingent and the fortuitous. In fact, uh, the film conveys to us a sense of being thrown, as we have the sense of being accidental spectators watching accidental uh, actors. We feel like flaneurs uh, fed by casual encounters randomly going from room to room, from sequence to sequence, picking ba uh, bits of conversations, details of bodies, faces, scenes. Uh, now, I would like to try to connect the work of the synecdoche and the deconstruction of the teleological time uh, as they emerge in the film with the film's title, which is The Future. Uh, it is pretty clear, in fact, that what is at stake, besides the specific social-political critique uh, addressed by the movie, uh, is the time to represent another idea, idea of history or time uh, that necessarily requires a new conceptualization of past, present, and future. Uh, there are two interviews of the director, Luis Lopez Carrasco, and they have three interesting titles. Uh, one is El Futuro Ya No Es Lo Que Era, and the other one is El Futuro Ya No Es Aquí. In the first case, future has changed with a melancholic tone that the ya possesses, uh, like if something that is not here yet could change. But of course, what this expression means is, um, is that the representation of the future, sorry, is the representation of the future, so the imaginary that it is associated with this idea. In the second case, future is not here anymore. So we can say uh, that future is nothing but the anticipatory structure of the present. And Sinadoki has this same anticipatory structure. Towards the end of the movie, we wander around the house, empty again, but filled by waste, rest, remains, rubbles of the party, of the night before. Uh, so this is the present. Uh, then we have intermittent lights, as we have seen, and we are finally outside, finally at the open air, down into the street, staring at the uh, facades of uh, housing complexes. Uh, now, according to the philosopher Walter Benjamin, that um, he uh, mentioned, uh, according to the Walter Benjamin's reading of uh, Messianism, history is nothing but a series of rubbles, fragments, and shards of a broken vase, uh, whose full shape we can glimpse through these broken pieces. Future, according to this vision, is the moment of the recomposition of this broken vase, the closure, closure of the circle, a totality that will give back to the fragments they lost tense. So the face of the angel of history, according to Benjamin, its gaze is turned towards the past, we would like to stay to make whole what has been smashed, but a strong wind uh, blows him towards the future to which his back is turned, while the pile of debris before him grows skyward. In other words, maybe there is no sense to recompose. There is no final recomposition of the fragments. Perhaps there is just, in Catherine Malibu's words, plasticity, working, molding, uh, las desiertas ruinas con bellas piscinas. That, uh, this is one of the uh, last sentences of the movie, so like the desert ruins and beautiful pools. Thank you. Yes.